last video i told you a story of ramu deepu and vinu where we learned how they started with barter system then started using cowry shells then we saw about 5000 years ago coins started to be used in regions of mesopotamia and india paper money was introduced about 900 years ago in china then we understood the different money of today in different countries like rupees dollars pounds and dirhams all these are good for our knowledge about money but today i am going to tell you about what to do with the money you have seems interesting first you have to earn money as a child you may get pocket money periodically like once a month you could do some errands at home or in your neighborhood and earn money you can make crafts like greeting cards or earrings and sell it you can create a useful youtube video and if it's viral you can earn some money that is what i am hoping for with this video now that you got money what do we do with this money we can put it in our piggy bank but that is not good if you put money in a piggy bank the money will remain the same over time the money will remain same but value of money will actually decrease what value of money ha let me explain that i love amul milk chocolate one bar of amul milk chocolate costs 20 rupees With hundred rupees, how many bars can I get? Can you guess? Yes, you can get five bars. A year later, the price of Amul milk chocolate is increased by one rupee per bar, and now it costs twenty one rupees. So now you cannot get five bars for hundred rupees. You need one hundred and five rupees for five bars. Four years later, the price of milk bar increased to twenty-five rupees. So now you get only four bars with hundred rupees. So this increase of price is called inflation. So because of inflation, you get less with the same money. So if you put your money in your piggy bank, it may be safe, but its value decreases. So that is not good. So what can we do? Another option is to put money in the savings bank. You can put the 100 rupees in a bank. If you keep your money in the bank, the bank will give you some extra money to you. It is called interest. So if you keep 100 rupees in a bank, in one year the bank will give you 4 rupees interest. So you will now have 104 rupees. So now that is good, right? Let's find out. With hundred and four rupees, can we buy five chocolates? Five chocolates cost hundred and five rupees, so we still have a little less. The savings bank interest in India is three to four percent. That means for hundred rupees, you will get three to four rupees interest, and it will become. 103 or 104 rupees at the same time inflation is 5% which means what you could buy with 100 rupees you will now need about 105 rupees so putting money in savings account is better than putting money in a piggy bank but still not good enough so what did we learn so far we learned cost of things increases and that is called inflation Because of inflation the value of money decreases as time passes and so putting money in the piggy bank is a bad idea you could instead put money in a savings bank in savings bank you will get some interest but we saw that the interest we get in saving bank is less than the inflation so putting money in the savings account is better than a piggy bank but still it's not good enough So now the question is then what do we do Bank gives you one more option called fixed deposit 
When you put your money in savings bank, you can withdraw the whole money the next month and you still get interest for one month. So the bank is not sure how long you'll keep the money in the bank. So to create some stickiness, bank created fixed deposit. So in fixed deposit, you have to keep the money for a fixed number of days. It can be for six months, it can be for one year, it can be five years. The bank generally gives more interest for a larger period. So if I put my 100 rupees in the bank for one year fixed deposit, instead of saving banks, I will get 6% interest. Then after one year, I can buy 5 Amul milk chocolates and I will have 1 rupee remaining with me. This is better than savings bank where I will get only 3 to 4% interest. So my money is finally growing a little bit. Instead of putting money in a piggy bank, you can put money in the savings bank. You will get better money. Instead of putting money in the savings bank, you can put money in a fixed deposit in the bank. You will get even better returns. Now what else can we do? You can invest money. You can start a business. Now, what is a business? Bank is a business. Let us understand from bank on what is a business. We saw that if you keep money in the bank, the bank gives you interest. Why does the bank give you interest? Where does the bank make money to give you the interest? Now, this is getting more and more interesting. Okay, let me explain. If you have some money extra with you, you can save the money in the bank. But there are also people who don't have extra money and still need money. People need money to buy a car or to buy a house or to start a business. Now you have 100 rupees extra with you and you save the money in the bank. At the same time, there's a person called Ramu who needed 100 rupees to buy a new car. Since you have 100 rupees with you, you could give Ramu the 100 rupees to buy the car. But you don't know Ramu and can't give him the money. Or you may know Ramu, but you are not sure you will get the money back from Ramu when you want it. So instead, you go and put this money in the bank and the bank will pay you 4 rupees interest. Ramu goes to the bank for a car loan and the bank gives Ramu a loan for rupees 100 and at the interest of 10%. So at the end of a year, Ramu pays back 100 rupees and another 10 rupees interest. The bank gives you back your 104 rupees, your 100 rupees and 4 rupees interest. So, the bank got the 6 extra rupees and they made it with your money. This 6 rupees is called the profit which the bank makes. Like this, so many people deposit money in the bank and so many people take loans and the bank makes a lot of profit. So this is one type of business. They take your money and make more money with your money. School is another business. Schools give you education. Schools hire good teachers. They make nice comfortable classrooms for learning. They run buses to get you to school. So they have to pay salary to the teachers. They have to pay rent for the school and they spend money to maintain buses. Where do they get this money for all this? They collect fees from you. After paying money to the teachers for the rent and spending money for the buses, the remaining money will be the profit of the owner. So school provides education and the owner makes money as profit. Like this, there are many small businesses like grocery shops, saloon or big businesses like banks, school, etc. There are huge businesses like Amul which make chocolates and companies like Toyota which make cars. So the business may be about providing education, banks or grocery shop or making chocolate. Everybody's final aim is to make money. Now you have 100 rupees and it is not enough to start a business. Then how can you invest in a business? You cannot start a business with 100 rupees. But you can become a partner in business using stocks or shares. Stocks? Shares? Now what is that? Let's assume 
Ramu, who had taken the car loan, has a wonderful business idea and wanted to start a business. Let us say he needs ten thousand rupees to start the business. He just has three thousand rupees with him. He asked his friends if anyone is interested to become a partner in his business, but no one had the money. So he goes to the bank and says, "I need a loan of seven thousand rupees." Bank looks at Ramu's business plan and says, "I can give you only two thousand rupees loan. Now Ramu needs five thousand rupees more." So Ramu decides to go public. Go public. Oh no, what does that mean? Going public means he will convert the 5000 rupees into stocks and ask public, all the people, not just friends, if they want to invest money in his business. So, he makes a business plan and shares the business plan with everybody. I read his business plan and I like it. I have 100 rupees with me for which I will buy stock for 100 rupees in Ramu's company. Like me, many other people invested money in Ramu's company. And Ramu got his remaining 5000 rupees by selling stock of his company. I also own 100 rupees worth of the company. Now this stock is available in a market called stock market. Here can buy and sell stock. Ramu then started his business. In the first year, the business did not go well and Ramu made losses. Everybody started selling their stocks in Ramu's company and the stock price went down. The 100 rupees that I had invested had become 70 rupees. I I would have lost 30 rupees. I had sold the stock in the stock market, but I did not sell. The year after, Ramu's company made very good profit and suddenly the price of the stock went up to 180 rupees. I also got a dividend of 20 rupees for the stock. A dividend is a share of profit that is distributed to all owners of the company. Since I am also the owner of company for 100 rupees stock, I also got rupees 20 dividend. I also sold the stock at 180 rupees. So in total, I got 200 rupees in two years. If I had put my 100 rupees in the bank, I would have got 108 rupees. If I had kept my 100 rupees in fixed deposit, I would have got 112 rupees. But by investing in stock, I got 200 rupees. Wow! Most of the richest people in the world, like Jeff Bezos, Mukesh Ambani or Jack Ma, are rich because they own lots of stocks in companies they built. Then you have investors like Warren Buffett and Rakesh Junjunwala who don't have their own company but buy stock in other company and are also very rich. So what I am saying is you can get very rich by buying stocks. But hold on! What if Ramu's company did not do good business even in the second year of for many years? The stock price can reduce and your 100 rupees may become 50 or even 20. So that is the risk. So if you invest in stock, your money can grow a little or sometimes it can become double or even triple. But sometimes you could lose a lot of money. This is called risk. You can get lots of profit when you invest in a stock or you also risk losing some or all your money. If Reliance does not do well, Mukesh Ambani will have to sell his palatial antler and take a three bedroom apartment next to mine. <laughs> so we have to be very careful. Before investing in the stock, you need to see the business, who is investing, how the stock has been performing and several other things. To understand all that, you need to understand the stocks and the business in detail. But you may not have the knowledge or the time to understand all this. For that, you have mutual funds. Mutual funds take money from you 
and they have experts who will understand different companies and will buy stocks in different companies on your behalf they will charge you a fee to manage the mutual funds when you want your money back you can withdraw the money from the mutual funds mutual funds also has a risk but since there are experts managing it you hopefully will make a good money but mind it even experts can make mistakes and you could sometimes lose your money so now you have five options to invest money piggy bank savings banks fixed deposit stock and mutual funds i have explained everything about investments to you now you have to make your first investment you can put your money in your piggy bank or savings account or fixed deposit or stocks or mutual funds it is your choice i will not tell you what to do but i will suggest one thing don't put all your eggs in the same basket let me explain you may have all your money in stock and your stock may grow but there's a chance that the stock price goes down as well and you may lose money instead you may put all your money in fixed deposit for 5 years as you get good interest but if you wanted to buy amul chocolate now what do you do your fixed deposit will be ready only in 5 years can you wait that long you may put all your money in savings bank but then you'll make very less money as interest so when i asked you not to put all eggs in the same basket or in other words to put your eggs in different baskets i meant your investments you put some money in savings some money in fixed deposit some money in stocks and some money in mutual funds you can discuss with your dad and mom and decide what to do now this was a long video i had earlier told you i will teach you a game but now i have to do that in my next video in my next video I will teach you about assets and liabilities and why you should accumulate assets not liabilities. I promise you that in my next video I will teach you the game too. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hope you like this video. Then please hit the subscribe button and then I will notify you when I add my next video. Ta ta. Bye bye. See you.